In this video, we're going to start looking at and interpreting box plots. But first, I want to look at data distributions, their skewness, and how this affects the shape of a box plot associated with the distribution. There are three main types of distribution. The first one is systematic or normal distribution. The second is right skewed or positively skewed distribution. And the third one is left skewed or negatively skewed distribution. If we look at systematic distributions or normal distributions, we can see that the median mode and the mean occur right in the middle. And the distribution is perfectly symmetrical about the mean, median and mode. In real life, of course, we don't get perfect symmetric distributions. This is what we call our normal distribution or bell curved. In a right skewed or positively skewed distribution, you can see that most of our data points are to the left of the histogram. In the distribution, most of our data points are to the left. The median occurs in the middle of the distribution. The mode is generally to the left because that's where most of the data points are. And the mean tends to be to the right of the median. And as you see, the distribution, the tail, goes off in the positive direction. For a left skewed or negatively skewed distribution, most of our data points are to the right of the histogram. If you draw the curve, it's easily seen that most of the data points are over here to the right. The median again is in the middle. The mode is to the right this time of the median because most of our data points are over here and the mean is to the left of the median. Let's look at systematic. What could be systematic? Well, we could have weight. If you took the weight of people in the population, most people's weight would be around the middle. There'd be some very light people and there'd be some who were on the, the heavy side, but most of the people would be in the middle. For a right skewed or positively skewed data, you can have something like average income. If you found out the average income of most people, most people, it's to the left. You know, as you go along and get higher and higher, there's fewer and fewer people with such a large income. There's not many people in the UK, especially with an income greater than, say, 150,000 sterling. The average income in the UK is just short of £30,000 sterling. And for a left skewed or negatively skewed data distribution, we could have age of retirement. As you go along and values get larger and larger, people tend to retire at a later stage of their life. You know, in the UK, you can't draw your pension until you're 67. So most people don't retire till their 60s. Some people even later into their 80s. There's very few people that retire less than 50, even fewer less than 40. So the tail skews off towards the left. If you look at the 
box plots associated with these three distributions. If you first look at systematic, the box is right in the middle. The maximum point and the minimum point tend to be the same distance away from the box. This means that the two whiskers are generally the same length. The median tends to be right in the middle of the box. If you look at the right hand skewed, the box is towards the left hand side of the data. That means there is a large or long right hand whisker. The left hand whisker is a lot shorter and the median tends to be quite towards the left hand side of the box. Left hand skewed or negatively skewed data, the box is right towards the right hand side of the data. This means that the left hand whisker is longer than the right hand whisker and the median point is towards the right hand side of the box. How to compare two box plots? One, compare the respective medians to compare location. Two, compare the interquartile ranges, that is the box lengths, to compare dispersion. Three, compare the overall spread. This is another aspect of dispersion. Four, look for signs of skewness. If the data do not appear to be symmetric, does each batch show the same kind of asymmetry? Look for potential outliers. The two box plots show the comparative memory recall times for unpleasant events and for pleasant events. If you look at the medians, the median for unpleasant events is higher than the median for pleasant events. You'd expect that. You would expect it to take longer to recall an unpleasant event than it is to recall a pleasant event. If you look at the interquartile range, unpleasant events are a lot, lot more spread out in the interquartile range than pleasant events. There is also a much larger overall spread. Unpleasant events go from about one and a half to eleven and a half, so there's a range of about ten, whereas for pleasant events it goes from about one to five and a half, which is about four and a half spread. Skewness. They both seem to be skewed positively. Most of the data points are on the left hand side. Pleasant seems to be more skewed than unpleasant. That's probably expected because, you know, recall times for pleasant events probably a lot less than for unpleasant events. And finally, there is one outlier for pleasant events. The box plots drawn below show the number of repetitions of a 70 kilogram bar that two weightlifters can lift. They both recall their repetitions over a 30 day period. You might be asked, which weightlifter is most consistent? Well, if you look at the two box plots, the median is the same, whereas weightlifter A is a lot more consistent because his repetitions are clustered around the middle. There is a lot less spread. The evidence for this is the range. His range goes from 6 to 12, so there's a range of 6, whereas Weightlifter B, his range goes from 2 to 15, 
So there is a range of 13. You might be asked which statistic is the same for both weightlifters. Well, if you look at uh, the two box plots, the median is in exactly the same position. Eight repetitions for both weightlifter A and weightlifter B. You might also be asked which weightlifter can do the most repetitions of 70 kilograms. Well, the weightlifter who achieved the highest score is the one who can do the most repetition. The further to the right the whiskers stretch, the higher the score. So in this case, it is weightlifter B with 15.